right, guys? How many times have you had days where your underwear just doesn't fit or feel right? You know, I've had many of those days, and it's not just a personal problem. It's everyone's problem. No one likes watching you readjust. Fortunately, Tommy John has the cure. You know, Tommy John, the 21st century men's underwear brand that provides mind-blowing comfort. I know because I discovered them, and I wear them every day. Now, imagine this. Super light, breathable fabrics combined with state-of-the-art design for a fit so perfect, it's almost like wearing nothing at all, and it's impossible to get a wedgie. They even have this patented horizontal quick draw fly that'll revolutionize the way you go to the bathroom. So for a truly unbelievable undergarment experience, visit TommyJohn.com and enter Alden, A-L-D-E-N at checkout and receive 20% off your entire first order. That's A-L-D-E-N and receive 20% off your entire first order. Guys, all of their underwear is backed by their best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. So you really have nothing to lose. Visit TommyJohn.com. All right. Well, welcome to another edition of the Alden Report. This is a, a very snowy Alden Report here uh, just north of Boston, Massachusetts. We got hit with a, with a giant snowstorm, a nor'easter, they call it up here. Everyone's freaking out, so we got a bunch of snow. But I made it in the studio. I'm really, really excited for my next guest. You know, this, this guy is a young entrepreneur. He's 16 years old. He's out there making money. He's, you know, I always talk about the classic entrepreneur, and I think... Uh, he may be the classic entrepreneur, but I think he's the classic entrepreneur of this generation of what's going on in the world right now. His name is Casey Adams. I found him on Instagram. I was like, what is this kid doing? I see all the things um, that he's doing. I see all the places he's going. I see the money he's making. And, and, and really, you know, for someone that uh, like myself who has built a business, uh, I'm looking at what all the young guys are doing, and I'm really interested um, to hear from Casey. He's a busy guy. He literally just flew in from L.A. last night. He's going to school. He's doing all these other things. So, again, um, please help me welcome Casey. Casey Adams. Casey, thanks for being my guest. Thanks so much, man. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. So, um, you, so you, you get a list of questions. We gave you all the questions. I know you're, <laughs> you're crazy busy. Like, I don't know how you do all this stuff, but we'll get into get into it because you're <laughs> you're, you're, you're only 16 years old. But tell us for um, for those of our um, listeners uh, who don't really uh, know your story, tell us tell us about kind of who you are and, and how you got into this whole world of, of making money through social media. Absolutely. So yeah, my really whole story goes back to sophomore year of high school. And um, I've been an athlete my entire life. And during sophomore year of high school, I was getting ready for football season. And I actually suffered a very severe neck injury. I was diagnosed with um, interspinous ligament damage. And um, during this whole negative moment in my life, the doctor said I wouldn't be able to play sports again. And possibly I could have been paralyzed. And it was really just hold this negative moment in my life. I started like getting down on myself. I didn't know what I wanted to do because sports was like my number one passion. But um, after that, it was kind of funny how things came about because like as I was kind of in my neck brace for 10 weeks, like hating life, I ran across one of my mentors now named Ty Lopez. He was selling this program. It was called the 67 Step Program. And it's really a program that really changed the direction of my life mindset wise, as well as like helped me separate myself from people that I was hanging out with that wasn't a good impact on me. But it was just from that that I started my brand. And then over the summer, I started a Snapchat marketing course after I made like almost 100 sales doing affiliate marketing. And after that, just things started picking up. I got interviewed by um, ABC Channel 8 News and the Huffington Post and got invited to go speak out in San Diego with a bunch of game changer entrepreneurs. And then things have just really gone up from there. The momentum has started going and it's kind of just all these new opportunities have been coming my way. It's wild again. So you're only 16, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Again, so again, the, re- the reason why I bring that up is, is again, for those of our, I mean, we have a lot of entrepreneurs that listen, business owners, young entrepreneurs that are listening to this. And when I see, you know, what you're doing right now, it's it, it's going to be amazing to watch because of what or, or from what you've already accomplished. And I want I want to just back up a little bit. You know, we'll get into the list of questions in a second. But you know, if, you know, you'd mentioned that you suffered this injury, and, and I actually just had uh, an individual on my podcast um, last week. His name is Chris Norton. He um, suffered a spinal cord injury. He was completely paralyzed, and and we talked about you know the mindset of, of being able to to kind of work through like man like my life was just was just altered forever. So you know at at a young age, a sophomore in high school, you know I know you're you're still an athlete. I think you said you're still playing lacrosse, which is awesome. Um, how, yeah. how, how does it like you know how do you mentally get over the fact that man this is this is my life just changed dramatically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't really easy when it first happened. It was just like a whole entire situation that lasted like 
months on months. And like, it was so funny because like, I thought it was just going to be this little, like little injury, go back on the field and boom, that's it. But it turned out like the, as soon as I got to the doctor, they put me in a neck brace. They told me all this news about how I had to go to like physical therapy when I was done. And I possibly couldn't do snowboarding or I can't do football ever again. And just all this stuff started coming at me so quick. And I've never really experienced an injury like that. So it was just something that like really caught me off guard and really twisted my mindset. I got so depressed and just so just like mentally not there. I was getting angry at my family for no reason. But like, as I kind of started getting into this course, it really just helped me understand like the mindset. It was about this health, wealth, love, and happiness. And that was Ty's program. And now um, like I, we've met in person today based off everything that I've accomplished. But it's been so cool because it's like coming from that negativity in my life, just overcoming that and now starting to do so many different things now. It just I look back on it and it's just like during that time, it was the most negative aspect of my life. But now it's like the biggest thing that really changed the direction of my life. So like as I've grown and kind of done a few different things and traveled more and gained perspective on a lot of stuff, it's like I look back and it's like it used to be the most terrifying, the most terrible thing, but now it's like a blessing to me, you know? Yeah, and again, it's such a healthy perspective because when I, you know, I think about, you know, what you said and, and how you found um, Ty Lopez and his program and the things that he's talking about and the things that he's teaching people, um, you know, I, I didn't find that type of stuff until my 20s, and, 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 and it's amazing to, uh, to, for you mm -hmm. to, to be able to grasp that and understand it. Now, you must have friends that are just like not buying into it, right? They're just like, this stuff is just BS, right? <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny because like when I first like started out, like I was doing my little like affiliate marketing, so, like making sales online and all my friends. Like it wasn't like a thing that I was like, I've been traveling and stuff. It was just kind of I was making a few hundred dollars here and there. Then I made a couple of thousand dollars here and there. And a lot of people like a few people started to catch on and like start to see what's up. But like now it's like a lot of people who follow Ty Lopez, like he flew me out to his house in Beverly Hills and I shot videos and for all of his courses and stuff. And now I'm on like ABC and I was on TV and stuff. So after all this stuff kind of started picking up, everyone's like, yo, what do you do? How can I help? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and like, it's, it's kind of funny to see that kind of chain reaction of stuff. Yeah. Now they're starting to see the success. Now they were like, Hey, what's this, what's this guy doing? I want to be a part of it too. Uh, people always, <laughs> no, no one really wants to take the risk, but they always want to, they want the rewards. So, that, so that's, that's awesome, man. Well, again, your story is awesome. So again, for the, so for those of our uh, viewers uh, and listeners, we are on with Casey Adams. He is a, you know, what I would call now in this day and age, the classic entrepreneur. He's a social media rock star. He's only 16 years of age. You heard it. Uh, if you, if you started listening from the very beginning, he suffered a, an injury and he kind of turned that positive positive, excuse me, turn that negative into a positive. He found some, some things out there that really changed his mindset. Now he's out there making, he's he's probably making more money than what most adults are making. And he's 16 years old. He's still <laughs> in high school. Okay. He just, and he just flew home last night from Los Angeles. He probably flew in the red eye, so he could probably make it to school. So this guy's a classic hustler. If you want some more information <laughs> about Casey Adams, you can find him on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, his Instagram account is at Casey Adams won, and I know that yeah, we'll, we'll probably talk a little, bit, a little bit about it. He also has a course, shows people how to make money on social media. He's got a Snapchat course, which a lot of people think Snapchat is you know this thing that's just kind of uh, you know people just sending crazy pictures. It's not that anymore. The, the, the major players are on Snapchat, and he kind of shows you how to do that. So if you want some more information about Casey Adams, you can just find him at, at Casey Adams one on Instagram. He's also on Twitter, the Casey Adams, and also Facebook, the Casey Adams. The Casey Adams. Now, Casey, um, so here we go. Ten Ten questions. First one, and I and you're the you're the youngest person that's been on my podcast. So we, we've had some pretty big players. I'm sure that you've seen <laughs> some of the people that we've had on here. You know, Grant Cardone, Ryan Blair, and and you know people like that. Um, success at 16 years old in this world that you live in. Tell me how you define success. Yeah, absolutely. It's so funny because like a lot of people that I talk to, like they'll talk, ask me these questions, and I always kind of cultivate the same answer because like, when people ask me like, how do you view success and for me learning from a lot of different mentors a lot of millionaires that are really made it in the entrepreneurial world i i kind of just always like to fall back on like tony robbins like always says like success without success without fulfillment success is the ultimate failure and i like to really focus on providing value to others because every kind of business every business that you have you're always going to be talking to people you're always going to be selling to people so i kind of like to create that personal relationship to really provide value to people and then always lying back on the other end of fulfillment because if you don't if you're not fulfilled in what you do that's you're never going to succeed because once you have that passion you have that purpose 
you really can just go all in on what you're doing and it's overall going to make things 100% easier, 100% better for everybody. So if I had to define success, it would overall just being fulfilled with what you do every single day and loving every second of your life. Yeah, man, I tell you, man, I just I just listened to you, man, at 16 years old. It's just wild the, the, <laughs> the way you think, man, and I, and I love it. Again, for those of you, whatever age you're at, if you're listening now, make sure you – you know, stop it, rewind it, go back and take notes because we were only into question one and, I, and, and I'm just, it's for me, it's mind boggling to listen to someone so young, uh, <laughs> but yet so knowledgeable uh, in, in what life is all about, you know, fulfillment, right? It's not necessarily, and the reason, you know, the other reason why I ask you too is because, you know, I talk a lot about, you know, the Instagram success or the or the Twitter success or the guys with the, with the cars and the watches and the blings and all this <laughs> other stuff. And that's really not success, right? That isn't what it's all, all about. Definitely. I mean, those are just things that like, some people see them as like motivation. Some people are like cars, some people like houses. And yeah, like those are cool things. But at the end of the day, if you're not fulfilled, then you've not fully succeeded. Yeah, that, ma- that makes a lot of sense. Now, uh, in your young uh, entrepreneurial career, I know we had that you had the, the, the setback and, and physically. Um, what, what has been your biggest professional obstacle up until this point and, and how did you overcome it? Yeah, definitely. So I would definitely say like one of a big obstacle that I had was really just like connecting with other people is just overall my age because sure. like a lot of people will definitely like I'll whether it be like oh social media help branding help like at first it was kind of just like words being flown out but now it's like people come to me that are 30 years old 40 years old asking for like branding help but like the bigger the biggest opportunity at first was just kind of like letting people know about like what's my vision, what I'm doing, what my accomplish- accomplishments are. But like as I've gotten kind of credible figure on like ABC, Channel 8 News and the Huffington Post, now that I can really leverage that to really tell people what I've been doing and they can go check out my article, that's how I've really overcame that. But like at first that was def- definitely one of like the biggest obstacles of just really how can I help people because of my age and some people don't see that. But as I've kind of grown, now I have people of a – all different ages coming to me, asking me questions. I'm doing consulting with them about branding and social media marketing, but that's definitely one of the biggest challenges that I had at first. Yeah, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Now, now let me ask you, for you individually, but, um, uh, regardless of the Huffington, I mean, again, you, the Huffington Post, ABC, NBC, you know, you, you, have, you have businesses. Um, w- was it tough for you to, to mentally, because, kind of, you, know, you, you know, I call it excuse tosis, right? People always have, you know, or ageitis, right? People are always worried about their age. Was there, w- what, other than uh, these, these, you know, these, these credibility factors, which are huge, um, was, it, was it something that you had to kind of just train yourself and say, you know what, man, I know this stuff, and I know it better than anybody else? Yeah, I mean, it, it was kind of funny because, like, as I've kind of, like, started going into the different programs and, like, changing my mindset, kind of getting into personal development, like, I just have this, like, rock-solid mindset of, like, I don't let people get to me. And it's all about just really telling people what I'm going to do and what I can actually do for them before it happens. Because at the end of the day, like, if you talk about something and you can't provide the value, then it's no point. But as I've kind of grown own and I'm providing the value growing my social media now people really start to see like what I'm doing and how I can help them so I would definitely say that like that's one of the biggest thing that I see now is just like as I've grown a lot of different people have been coming to me from all different areas now yeah it's great because when I first when I first reached out to you uh you know about a couple months ago I mean I, I've watched your Instagram Instagram account almost double and it's continuing to grow every, every single day and it's, it's wild to see and uh it, it's it's um you know, to be 16 years old and to be as successful as you are, it's an it's an awesome thing. But I also, as I, as I look at it and think about, you know, what you're doing, you know, this is, you know, 16 year olds, 15 year olds. You know, my daughter's 11. You know, these are the types of people, folks, that we actually should be talking to about social media. My daughter's on Musically, right? Have you probably heard of that? I didn't even know what Musically was, and then and then now she's on Lively, and I see how big it, big it's growing. So, you know, if you want advice about what's going on in the social media world, you want to talk to the people that are really living it. I mean, that you. I mean, you grew up in this world, right? We didn't, yeah. I didn't, I mean, you know, Twitter and, and Insta, I mean, and Instagram and Facebook, like this stuff is relatively new to, to guys like me. You grew up with this stuff. Right? Yeah, definitely. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I first found Instagram when I was like 11, 12 and it just it used to be, used to be a thing posting pictures with friends, but now it's like I've started learning from different mentors and seeing like the change of everything with whether it be marketing, branding and business in general. And now it's like, now I'm starting to leverage, monetize and really cultivate that brand over time. 
Now let me ask you this again. So you're uh, a, are you only a, a sophomore or junior? Sophomore. I'm a junior right you're now. Junior. All right, so you're a junior in high school, uh, and I asked this question about about um, education. I usually ask it for people like post high school, but let me ask you right now. So you're you're a junior in high school. Uh, up until this point, um, do, is has your education really helped you in your business success? Yeah, yeah. It's so funny because I get this question a bunch. So I mean, I like to. Oh, always, geez, I, I thought like I was to, special. Um, really, <laughs> no, 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 you, know, you definitely are because like I have, I have a good I have a good answer now for this because just learning from different people. So like for Ty Lopez, after I've flown out there and we had like some interviews, like one thing that really hit me was that he said is don't let modern schooling get in the way of your education. And I don't say that in a bad way, but I say it as in like a lot of people like they'll go to school, they'll learn what they need to learn or whatever, but they go home and just don't have anything coming into their brain, new thoughts, new ideas. So <laughs> I would definitely say that. Yes, like school is important, whether it be like basic knowledge, but if you really want to be specialized in a subject, specialized in a field, it's really all independent work and really going on the internet because you can learn really anything online nowadays, but in school, they teach you the limited like things beyond whether it be science, social studies, math, English. So if you really want to like go into a new field, it's really all independent work what it comes down to, honestly. Sure. Yeah. You know, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And that, and that's, you know, I think that's the right answer, you know, for a lot of people, you don't want to. You don't want to like, dissuade people from getting that education that they would need if you're, you know, if you're going to be a lawyer or a doctor, you, you know, you you want the yeah. people that actually that actually went there and were, were trained. Yeah. Now, this question I ask, um, uh, it's about marketing, right? Me as as the CEO of a, of a marketing company, um, for you right now, uh, again, you're you're you know, the social. We use social media, that broad brush of social media, and all these different things. All these, they're all they're all popping up all over the place. For you right now um, on Instagram, because I know Instagram's kind of your 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 go to thing. But what is like the most effective form of marketing for you on Instagram? In other words, what what are you doing to get people to find you on Instagram? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I kind of do like a bunch of different aspects right now, but I would definitely say for like marketing purposes, like the best way I see it is if people are already already sold before you try to sell them a product. Meaning, if you have credibility, if you're hanging around the certain people, if you have the certain mindset, you have the certain vibe that people see in your social media account, it's not necessarily you're trying to sell, but if you can provide that value to people. So like with me on social media, I'll be posting like content of me traveling and me like meeting all these cool people. And I kind of look at it as of, like the three pillars of my account, the three pillars of marketing. And when I want people to come to my social media, I want them to see me as a young individual who has his own business, who's traveling and who's meeting a lot of cool people like mentors, right? So that's kind of how I perceive it as like the three pillars on social media. But like, as I go back to the marketing aspect, when I'm, whether, whether it be tr- me trying to sell my product or selling other people's products, it really just kind of, I don't like to promote a product if I don't actually use it and I've seen results with it. So I think it all comes down to really like giving the people the value and not trying to sell them, but understanding who they are and how you can provide value to them. Like whoever I try to sell to, I really try to get to know that person beforehand because if you can't provide value to them in the most truest way, it's never going to come down to like a positive relationship type of thing. Yeah, I love it. You know, so I mean, I just wrote down three pillars of marketing and, and providing value. I, I, again, it's just it's it just listening to you, man. It's just so awesome uh, to listen to Keith. This guy is a up and coming, rising rock star in the world of social media. He's a jet setter. He's traveling all over the country. If you want some more information about Casey Adams, if you want to learn from somebody that's lived it and is doing it and he's continuing to to grow his business, you could just uh, find him on Instagram. It's at Casey Adams One. He's also on Twitter, the Casey Adams. And he's also on Facebook, the Casey Adams. He's been featured in Huffington Post, ABC, and NBC. Really featured all over the world for the for you know for the setback that he suffered. Really, kind of what he's doing uh, in the world of social media. And the you know I see a lot of guys like this out there. Um, and one of the things that I could kind of tell just from his account, uh, without even actually talking to Casey, is that he's a real guy. And I'm sure Casey, you probably maybe have an opinion on this. There's a lot of guys out there, a lot of gals out there on Instagram, yeah. Twitter, Snapchat that just aren't real. So if you want to learn from mm-hmm. somebody who's real, that's doing real things at 16 years of age, I can't wait to see what he's doing at 19. Um, you can find him <laughs> at uh, at Casey Adams one. Casey, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, I know you're only 16, but uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you're doing all these things again. You just flew in last night. Uh, what did you fly the red eye from L.A.? You must have, right? Right? Uh, something like that, yeah. yeah I don't yeah. really know exactly. <laughs> yeah, late night, right? So you, you flew in from L.A. because yeah, you're, 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 you're East Coast. Um, 
you're in school, you're running a business, um, you're building your brand, uh, you know, you try, you obviously you need a social life. Um, how, how do you handle stress? What do, what do you do for stress at 16 years old? I mean, do you, are you aware of that type of stuff? I mean, yeah, definitely. So like, it kind of like funny how like uh, recently I've got a bunch of new stuff on my plate, whether it be like traveling more and now I do like consulting calls with people about branding. But like, so like right now I'm a, I'm a junior in high school. Like I, the lacrosse season just started up. I, I just got like a dozens of like consulting calls i literally did like four before this call and i was jumping all over the place got back from practice didn't even shower yet so there's just like a bunch of stuff going on with like then it's homework and all this just different type of stuff then i gotta fit in eating because that's important too but i would definitely say like once i really get stressed like it's also i'm so grateful for it because a lot of people that come to me and ask me questions whether it be they want to start a business they want to do this they want to do that but they don't know how but as I've kind of grown and I have all these new opportunities coming into my life, like it's such a grateful feeling because I'm actually able to travel. I'm actually able to hop in these calls and provide value to people. So whenever I'm like feeling stressed or feeling anxious or like I'm really feeling down, I always just like to reflect on what, where I've come in the last year and a half from my injury and how I'm actually helping like a lot of people right now. So that's just one of the few things that's like really allowed me to handle stress is just like being grateful on what I've accomplished and how I'm able to help a lot of people out. So, so yeah, I mean, again, it's just the way you think, man, is just awesome because this is how entrepreneurs think. So you embrace it. You, this is, this is, this is something yeah. that, you, you know, because someone said to me, I think it was Nolan Bushnell, the founder of Atari and Chuck E. Cheese's, you know, he was on the podcast and, you know, he said, you know, if it, I don't get stressed. And I said, how do you not get stressed? He says, because I love what I do. This is, this is who I am. I'm not, it doesn't stress me out. I mean, if you're passionate about it and you're talking about earlier, you know, you know, providing value and, and it's fulfilling to you, it's, it's not as stressful, right? Yeah, definitely. And also, like, whenever it's, like, something, like, I'm really stressed, I always like to, like, fall back on books because, like, whenever I'm reading and learning from mentors who have, like, accomplished, like, multi-million, whether it be multi-million or billion-dollar businesses, like, they've been able to cultivate these huge, monstrous, stressful things, but they're still alive. Or some of them have even built up even bigger businesses. But, like, if other people can handle all this stress and, like, I like to look back because, like, as I've kind of met people like Ty Lopez and I've seen his daily actions like every 10 minutes he's doing something. He got a new meeting. He has to go back to the office. He has to do a call, do this, do that. Like I always like to put it in perspective as in like I'm not the real busy one. Like the real busy ones are the people running multi-million, billion dollar businesses. And I'm still in high school. I have this luxury of not like going out paying my rent. So I, that's something I'm also grateful for right now. Like as I'm a young entrepreneur, I don't have all these like real life necessities right now. But yes, like I'm traveling and stuff. But it's also just falling back on like, where I'm at and how I'm so grateful for it. Yeah, I, I love it. Now, uh, I'm going to jump to question seven. Uh, in um, young people, right? You're, you're, I mean, you are a young person. So young people that are out there right <laughs> yeah. now uh, that are maybe in their workforce, maybe people that are just a, maybe slightly older than you that have, you know, they're out there, or maybe, they're, maybe they're, they are in high school and they're working and they're just working like a part-time job or, uh, or, or again, or maybe um, they're a mid-level manager at, at some company. Um, what, what sort of advice would you give um, you know, these young up-and-coming business people slash entrepreneurs on how to grow? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I definitely like to look at growth as something that is you can really handle in all as aspects of your life, whether it be health, wealth, love, happiness. But like for people that are whether it be trying to move up in their job or whether it be to start a business or just become more happy, I really like to look at it as, you can't combine them all into one pillar, but if you start to really work on your health more, if you start to work on creating a business more, like all the aspects will start to rub together and it'll help you really cultivate that growth over time. But like for people, let's say that want to start a business, but whether it be they don't have the money to, they don't want to risk it. But I would definitely say like for my example, my parents, like they want to start earning an additional income, but they have jobs and that's completely fine. Like they've raised a family, but like it's all about the time, not when you're not at work, when that eight to 12 hours when you're home and relaxing, sitting on the couch, like what could you be doing right now to help you get ahead in the next two, three, five years? Because it's all about time. That's the most precious asset you have. And I really like to look at things that have like, all right, if you're sitting on the couch, how can you be delegating your time differently to accomplish a task, whether it be going to the gym, reading a book, focusing on your business, but like what's some of the things that you can really focus on in your spare time? to really help you grow over time because that's what all it's about is the daily actions that you really put into your brain, not the what if or the I'm gonna. That's something I've learned from one of my um, mentors, actually 15, Caleb Maddox. Sure, and he's yeah. helped me he's just, like crush it and everything. But that's just kind of things that I like to look at is it's not about what you're going to do in five, ten years, but it's about what you're doing that's going to help you get to there. 
Yeah, I, you know, I love it. You know, my next question was was going to ask you was going to ask you about efficiency, but I mean, you kind of answered that question as well. Is is really almost like you know mapping out your life or your day to your day to day activities, right? I mean, it's just you know the stuff that you've learned and the stuff you're doing now. It makes sense, right? You got to figure out, you know, what am I going to do today? What am I going to do tomorrow? What am I yeah. going to do the next day? How am I going to do that? What am, what am I what are my steps? What are the things I need to do to, to to you know to get out of bed and put my pants on and then go down, you know, mm-hmm. all these and people most people don't think like that, right? They they always like you said, they always, you know, I, I call it if I had a only syndrome. If I had a only <laughs> done that, right? If I had a only, yeah. you know, taken that risk. If I had a only went to school. If I so many people think about, you know, oh, or I'm going to get to it. You know, it's like, well, when the fuck are you going to yeah. get to it, man? Like when are you going to do it, right? <laughs> Right. Yeah. Like, and also like something like that I learned from Todd Lopez, just like a mental habit is like a lot of people like to look at their life. Let's he calls it the lottery approach when you're supposed to really look at it as a sculpture approach, because a lot of people, they expect that lottery ticket to a six pack, a lottery ticket to a happy and healthy life, a lottery ticket to a million dollar business. Right. But like, it's all about the sculpture approach. And what I'm, what he means by that is really like the daily actions, the chipping away at where you want to be in the next five years and the really itty gritty things and the daily actions, because it's not about the big picture, but how you get there and the journey that it takes. And that's how I like to look at it as I'm 16 right now. Like if I want to be a millionaire in the next two, three, four, five years, like what can I be doing today? That's going to allow me to get that, whether that be trying to raise my income, trying to connect with a new mentor, but it's all really about the daily actions that you're doing because that's going to help you build momentum over time. I love it. I love it. Folks, again, we are on with Casey Adams. He is a classic social media rock star he's making money online he's showing other people how to make money on online um if you want some more information about casey adams you can just find him on instagram at casey adams one you can also find him in on, on twitter the casey adams you can find him on facebook the casey adams he, you know he's really again he's 16 years old he's a busy guy i don't know if you're how long you've been listening but earlier he, he had you know he came from school he had practice he had four phone calls before that before this podcast he probably he hasn't showered yet he hasn't even eaten dinner yet he's still got homework you get he's doing all these different things folks and here's the best part about it he's probably making more money than you so if you want some more information about casey just uh you can find him at casey adams one again on instagram we have a couple more questions um this one uh, you know i kind of tailored for you and, and i'm really interested to, to to hear you to hear your answer because you know when you see what's going on in the world of, of technology not necessarily marketing when you look at artificial intelligence when you look at um you know um you know these virtual reality type type things that are happening. What, where do you see mark? What does marketing look like in the next three to five years? Are you looking at like artificial intelligence? Are you looking at virtual reality and what people are doing in that world? Definitely, definitely. See, I've read a bunch of articles about just like the VR, the artificial intelligence, because like back to like the college and like the whole that education aspect for a second. Like all the jobs or like many of the jobs today, they're going to be wiped out by AI specialists in the next five years because they're just going to be able to delegate their tasks towards them and how like AR is coming very popular nowadays and how it's going to really transform how people live in the next 10 years based off like the articles and the research like I really feel like on the whole marketing aspect of things and like the whole business in general is like there's going to be industries in the next 10 years that we have no idea about right now but they're going to be multi-million dollar industries and there's going to be over like a hundred thousand employees for each one that we have no idea about and like the modern education system like they build all these people ready to go in the workforce, but they don't even understand like the workforce is about to be a completely different thing in the next 10 years. But and all back to like the whole marketing aspect of things, I really feel that um, VR is going to be definitely a game changer. I actually know um, my, my good buddy Gerard Adams. He sold Elite Daily for $50 million. Sure. And he does a bunch of stuff with, um, a, uh, not AR, um, virtual reality with like yep. marketing concept and personal branding. And that's kind of crushing it right now. And it's not like a big thing. But I definitely see it like picking up with a lot of like big industry leaders along the way in the next couple of years. Yeah, I uh, I own a uh, an escape room. Uh, you, you familiar with escape rooms? You know what they are? Uh, not really, honestly. Yeah, so, yeah, so escape rooms. They're 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 um, they're they're these rooms. They're themed rooms where you can go into like for what ours is called Wicked Escapes, and you go in and it has a. We have one room that's it's a it's a it's a jail theme, and you go in and twelve people go in and. They lock you in, and you have to try and figure out. It's a big, giant, like kind of human puzzle. And then mm-hmm. we have like a museum one, and then we have another one. Uh, um, it's called the Hole. Uh, we were just at um, uh, Pax East, uh, or well, I wasn't there, but my, some of my guys were there. And uh, it's which is a, it's like the largest cosplay, you know, uh, convention uh, I think in the Northeast. And there was like you know hundreds of thousands of people that go there, and and the virtual reality was just everywhere. It was like you know just taking taking over everything, and it's just wild to see. I haven't. 
really uh, done it yet. I mean, I put them on just a little bit before, but just that yeah. to me is like you know I want them looking at what's going on. It's 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 wild. I mean, it's really what be like you said. There are businesses right now that you and I probably couldn't even think of, <laughs> like just like you said that are gonna have a hundred thousand employees and we and we have no idea what it is. Yeah, exactly. That's a, like that's a, that's kind of like what I've learned from a lot of people. And like I've, I met somebody who does like the oh, it's like a sleep therapy type of thing. How it's like a booming industry right now, and all these jobs are getting created by it, but no one really knows about it. And it's just funny how I like to look at things of like the next five, ten years, and how fast really technology has been growing since I was uh, like eight, nine, ten years old, and how people like aren't catching the trends, but it's the ones who do that really build that business or get in early that make millions of dollars in the investment. So that's kind of how I like to like visualize long term is just like playing the trend because there's going to be so many things popping up in the next couple of years that are really just going to be like eye opening to a lot of people but like if you know beforehand and really catch that trend you're going to be so much more successful <laughs> absolutely and i think you are in a great great uh position uh to know where you know to where the trends are right now all right last question i want to thank you uh so much for your time so last question uh, if you could leave our, our viewers and listeners with one piece of advice uh in business or or just really really and when i say business i i think uh, you know i'm more thinking of a uh, of the entrepreneurial side of things because that's kind of who you are what sort of advice can you give anybody out there uh, what, what what's what's your secret yeah, I mean, I would definitely say, like, it's not about what you're going to do in 10 years. It's not about what you're going to do tomorrow, but each and every day is a gift that you have the opportunity to, whether it be create something, to impact somebody. And if you can really focus on cultivating your daily actions to really, whether it be inspire someone, whether it be to start that business idea, to start that whole index for the new business that you have up and coming, or start going to the gym, like, it's not about what you want to do or what you're going to do. Like, Caleb Maddox, one of my good friends, he always says, the gun that kills the most people is the gunna. And if you have that gunna mindset, like you're gonna write a book, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that, that's the thing that's gonna kill you the most. So it's all about really delegating your time daily to what you wanna accomplish because that's helped me start getting all these interviews and start building my business and start meeting all these millionaires and start traveling more. It's not about what I'm gonna do when I graduate high school, but rather what I do on a daily basis that has really helped me build this momentum. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, you know, folks. Again, we're running out of time, and you know, today's episode has actually been brought, uh, brought to you by Cloisonne. It's C L O I X O N N E dot com. If you'd like some more information about Cloisonne, it's one of the fastest growing direct selling companies out there. Again, it's C L O I X O N N E dot com. So just go there. They do have a program. The first five thousand people, I'm told, that do join are able to participate in the profit sharing program. So if you're looking to make a little bit extra money, go there. Check it out, folks. We've been on with Casey Adams. I'm really really excited we were able to get together you know i've been actually kind of all over this kid for 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 a couple months now because he's so busy he's a classic social media rock star he's out there making money he's showing other people out there how to make money he's only 16 years of age but he's consulting with people from all over the world if you want some more information about casey adams if you want to learn kind of what he's doing he has a program he can show you what he's doing and he can also teach you how to make money as well you can find him on instagram at at casey adams one you can also find him on, on Twitter at, excuse me, at the Casey Adams and also Facebook, the Casey Adams. You could just kind of Google him because he's been featured on the Huffington Post, <laughs> ABC, NBC. You know, he's got businesses out there. He's out there doing things. And, and, and ultimately, at the end of the, end of the day, for me, for those of you that have you know heard the podcast before and some of the guests that we've had on before, you know, he's a real guy. He's 16 years of age. He's out there doing it. He's super busy. He's, I mean, he just flew in from L.A. last night and he made time for this podcast. So, again, if you want some more information, about Casey Adams, the best place to find him, I guess, would be Instagram is at Casey Adams. One Casey, you know, I want to thank you so much uh, for being my guest. You, you've really, I just love listening to everything um, that, that you're saying, and I, and I can't wait to see where you're going to be tomorrow, the next day, and, and the next day after that. <laughs> my name is Michael Alden. This has been another edition of the Alden Report, and we'll see you next time. All right, guys, how many times have you had days where your underwear just doesn't fit or feel right? You know, I've had many of those days, and it's not just a personal problem. It's everyone's problem. No one likes watching you readjust. Fortunately, Tommy John has the cure. You know, Tommy John, the 21st century men's underwear brand that provides mind-blowing comfort. I know because I discovered them, and I wear them every day. Now, imagine this. Super light, breathable fabrics combined with state-of-the-art design for a fit so perfect, it's almost like wearing nothing at all, and it's impossible to get a wedgie. They even have this patent 
blended horizontal quick draw fly that'll revolutionize the way you go to the bathroom. So for a truly unbelievable undergarment experience, visit TommyJohn.com and enter Alden, A-L-D-E-N at checkout and receive 20% off your entire first order. That's A-L-D-E-N and receive 20% off your entire first order. Guys, all of their underwear is backed by their best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. So you really have nothing to lose. Visit TommyJohn.com. 